Should we just do a basic intro? Like, start from where we're talking 10 seconds ago and <laughs> this is the intro. <laughs> uh, nah, well, nah. Well, we have to fill in time because <laughs> because nothing's happened. But any yeah. no, let's just do the proper thing. Yeah, okay, go. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another Star Marineless episode of Fortnightly Frontier. I am your host, Arianator. With me is, as always, my co-host, Luce Unit. Hello. This is episode seven, I think, of season two. I have no idea. Welcome to Fortnightly Frontier. We didn't even prepare for this one, really. Because no, we didn't. A- Basically, a- I've been away for the last two weeks on holiday. So Actually, have I. seeing you... In yeah, Croatia. Mm, that was nice. Yep, and we went for some drives so twice. Very exciting. Basically, exciting. both of us were out of our respective countries and had absolutely no time to prepare. Yeah, I haven't seen the last two episodes of. Uh, I literally got back yesterday after being awake for forty hours and driving through the night, and uh, so I haven't seen any of the um, the around the verse episodes yet. I haven't read the report about Star Marine, but I understand TLDR. It's basically, we're getting there, but not yet. Basically, yeah. Yeah. There's also the monthly report, which I had grand plans of reading, but really couldn't squeeze another four hours into my day today. Yeah. I probably could have, but I was still tired, so. Yeah, no, not I blaming just you. did nothing. <laughs> First day back at work, man. Yeah. Um, we did see some nice pictures of the new ship, though. The you, Genesis Starliner, as it's called. You say pictures. I've only actually seen one picture of it. <sighs> well, you complained, though. You complained about it looking too much like an old design. Yes, but I don't mean an old design of Star Citizenships. But this could be just, you know, the um, this company's style. Because especially um, in the promo pics, they released it with painted, quote-unquote, wings, but the body, the fuselage, was completely unpainted. Ah, uh, yes, because it is a new it is a new manufacturer, isn't it? Yes, it's the Genesis yes. company. Yeah. Um, and especially with the unpainted fuselage and the really tiny cockpit windows, it reminded me of, you know, those um, post-World War II airliners. Unpainted... You know, the early DC planes, something like that. I'm not saying it looks bad, because it looks great. I like it. It just kind of doesn't mesh with the whole design language that we've seen from other ships from Star Citizen. But, as you said before, yeah. this is a new manufacturer, so that just may be their style. That is the point. It is a new manufacturer, so they have a new style. Maybe they're going for that retro look. Yeah, and... and um. Uh, Lisa Ohanian? Yes, is, that's her name. Yep. Um, she's doing all of the design stuff at the moment, building up the design uh, booklets, basically, to show what it is. So I guess that's a new one. There's probably been an ep- a, a segment on uh, one of the Around the Versus that I haven't seen, which show the new design language for the new company, possibly. Maybe in, f- in 51, because I think it came out after 50 was released. So... Sorry, I haven't if... seen episode 51 yet either. I just finished watching 50... <laughs> zero. <just> 10 <laughs> 50 minutes ago. Zero. <laughs> <laughs> 50 zero. Just 10 minutes ago before... Just 10 minutes previously, we started recording. We have been busy, Yeah, we've been away on holiday. It's the summer here, so... Yeah, been busy and not looked... But yeah, po- possible in... It's the early summer. We tried to beat, you know, the holiday rush... Did by we? getting in there. Well, yeah. I did. I did. You didn't? No, I just didn't have a choice. Because that's oh. <laughs> when my girlfriend's job has changed. So I need to. We need to fit a holiday in there and get some time sorted there. But other, because otherwise she won't get any holiday this year. All oh, right. And second holiday is going to be at Gamescom. My Basically. second holiday, yeah. Technically, yeah. yeah. Mm. But she wasn't available to come to Gamescom. And if she was, she wouldn't come anyway. Because <laughs> this is not her thing. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I know several people who I could describe as such. Yeah, have we? Have we? Um, when when is uh, 
Did we? I don't even know what I'm saying right now. Did we announce last week that we were going to CitizenCon? Yes, we did. Last week? Last fortnight? God damn it. I don't know if we announced it last episode, but I'm quite sure we talked about it, that we're going to both Gamescom and CitizenCon. Okay, yeah, anyway, we're going to both. Yes, indeed. And that um, was the end of that conversation. That was the end of the topic. <laughs> uh, speaking of Gamescom, a bit of hyper news, if you allow us to slightly modify um, the whole routine. Um, patch 1.1.4 is scheduled to be released today, so by the time this episode comes out, it will already be out, and it basically just contains a piece of flair for all the people attending Gamescom. Attend? Oh yeah, because I've sold out the tickets, so they can release the yes, flair already. Yes, of course. Already. Perfect. Awesome. I get some And they've also announced 1.1.5, which will not contain Stammering, but they have also not released any change list, so stay tuned for that. That's interesting. I really hope they fix the damn helmet because it's been askew for the past few patches and it's really driving me crazy. Yeah, and, and if if they are actually releasing patches while they're pushing really ahead with the development of Star Marine, that's a good sign for the future development of the game. Again, for for excuse me, um, for those that aren't really familiar with the process of of developing games it's like what we're seeing should never be seen by us right now yes and it's it's for them to actually be releasing for testing not just internal testing but external testing for them to be releasing that right now is really complicated for them and it's actually probably adding a lot of time to the development cycle Yes, if you take um, a standard AAA title, you basically don't see what's going on for the first four or five years of development. Well, it depends on the AAA title. It depends on the AAA title, but for but, instance, yeah. Grand if the Theft engine... Auto V, four years at least. Yeah, if, you're, if you've got a, like um, with the Battlefield games, they have a very solid engine to start off with. They don't need to do much to it to release the next that, one. That is basically but just creating new content every yeah, time. It's basically two to three years for a Battlefield game to be de- from the start to the end. If they're de- And the engine development is separate from that. So you'll see a new, a new quote-unquote generation with the new engine or whatever. You'll see that and that's, that is developed alongside it so it's not necessarily least with the game mm-hmm. but in the case of star citizen we're seeing an engine that's existing that has basically had to be rebuilt from the ground up in, in a lot of cases to get it to a standard and get it flexible it's enough. basically ju- it's just the rendering of the 3d objects the shaders a lot of the shaders uh the pbr um everything yep. had to be redone for the, the game. 64 bit in, 64 uh, bits yeah, yeah um, the AI um, large world like you said there's a lot of uh, stuff that I can't there's a, think of right yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff yes and that is basically um, a lot of things that just had to be built it's almost as if they built their own engine on top of CryEngine at this point yeah exactly they had a good a reasonably good base to start with but they have had to rebuild a lot of stuff into it but actually, choosing CryEngine has probably saved them a year or two of development in there. Mm, mm-hmm. So I'll, yeah, it, they're getting to a point where content is being the content and fine tuning is becoming the biggest hurdles for them, and that just takes time. And that's going to take about a year or two more, I think. We are going to have our, uh, access a lot sooner. Yeah, I think it's it's still going to be a lot less time than people think should be like if you take half-life 3 just how long has been has it been in Possib- development so for now possibly it would be a little bit less time more time but I don't know. Again, it, it, we don't know because we've been completely involved with the development since the get-go and we don't know how long such a game would actually take if it was being developed behind closed doors. Yeah, and Because at this point, this would not even be nowhere near um, an open or a, even a closed beta. Yeah, and, and, and we're in the unique position of seeing how it will affect the development of the game. Because how much work are they putting into getting this release stable? 
of Star Marine. How much work are they putting into getting, getting that stable and how much of that stableness will actually carry across? And then you have, I mean, that's, that, that's a big thing, right? Because yeah. when you're building a game, you don't, excuse me, you don't need to necessarily make it stable. You just have to be able to test the bits that you want to test. And I think that's what I did with Arena Commander. They released a lot bef um, a lot sooner than they should or wanted to because the community was so demanding at that yep. point. And they released a very buggy version from the get-go and very feature-lacking and then they built on top of it. I think they're trying to avoid that with Star Marine. The, the initial release will be a lot more polished, a lot more feature-filled, and there will be a lot less... Catastrophic bugs. <laughs> yes, a, lo a lot fewer catastrophic it, bugs, it, yes. It might work on day one as opposed to Arena Commander. In the past, has been problematic with that. Working on day one, like some bug in the patching or something like that. Hopefully, instead of really, really pushing you out exactly on the state, they're, they're just saying, well, let's get it working. Let's make sure everything will work and let's drop it. I think, actually, from their perspective as well, the, the first person shooter site is probably going to be the biggest seller for the game. Yeah. Because you imagine how many people play first person shooters and how many people play flight sim games. It's exactly. Just, is this yeah, for, for a lot of people, I think the um, space sim part is just going to be a way of getting from one pla planet to another in order to participate in first-person shooter gameplay. But for yeah. some people, that is going to be the primary um, attraction to the game. Yeah, they're only going to play the first-person shooter game. Mm -hmm. They're, some people don't want to engage in space combat. They're only going to play transport. They're going to be play space truckers. Yeah, it's, but that's cool. Um, that that is cool. Yeah, it's so lifelike. I mean, just like here, you can choose to, if you have, if you can afford it, to travel all over the world, or you can choose to spend every day on your local paintball field. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But anyway, um, we were talking about the Starliner briefly. Yep. And um, I really like the concept of the ship. It is the first ship that is not player-driven. The, the majority of the ship will not be player-driven. Yeah. Because um, all the ship so far is basically a person's ship for to let them, you know, go from A to B, to shoot, to scavenge, what have you. But this will be a first kind of ship that you'll be seeing probably all over the PU, just transporting people. Yep. You can hijack it, kidnap a bunch of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I meant was um, that it introduces the whole notion of not actually just working with NPCs because, you know, you will, they have said um, a lot of time that if you don't have um, enough friends to populate your multicolor strip, you can play with NPCs, but you'll also be working with the NPCs as, an, as, um, as a commodity. Yes, you know I mean? that's a that's yes. a that is kind of a cool concept as well. Yes, working with NPCs as a commodity as opposed to individual NPCs to fill in um, a player's shoes. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 what I'm trying. That's the sort of concept that they're introducing with this, and and is um, interesting to see because I don't think any space game has had that before. Even Eve doesn't have that. Be doesn't have that. <laughs> I, th I mean, think, well, I th in the sense that you're talking about it, then no, because, or ye yes and no, because you have to transport a shipload of refugees, for example, in some things, but, but not individual AI players yes, that are buying tickets on your thing for the purpose of, it's, it's like they're real players, but they're actually AI. 
Yeah, well, that that is one of the biggest things about the Star Citizen Persistent Universe that a lot of people don't realize is going to be a huge thing that there will be, for every actual player, there will be nine AI players with lives, jobs, purpose in life that yeah. need to do things. And if you if you if you have um, a Starliner to go from Terra to Earth or whatever, every NPC that boards your ship will go there for a reason. It won't be just because there is a mission transport yeah. 55 refugees from Terra to Earth. It will be because each of those individual NPCs, for whatever reason, has decided in their point of life to go from one planet to another. Yeah, so that security, NPC security guard that you see in most games that's standing at the door that just says generic things like wait here to be scanned. Your scan is good, come through. Or, or as an example, they, they you're carrying a gun and they arrest you for carrying a gun and you can explain it away, whatever, saying, sorry, I actually forgot I had it. I had like five guns on me and I forgot that I had the f this fifth one here. And... Uh, then they're on the same cruise ship as you or they're on the same transport as you or you're the pilot of a cruise ship that they're on because they want to go away on holiday. Yeah. Or they have a new job somewhere and they need to go that way. And that's... Yes, actually having, you know, people as a commodity in the game is... But actual people is very interesting to me. It's weird to think about it like that. But yeah, that is very, yeah. very interesting. Very, very cool. Assuming they actually implement it that way. They've said that they will do it in that sort of way, but we don't know how it will actually work yet. So it's a bit hard to comment on or say how it will actually be. But that would be True. cool. True, yeah. Because, you know, um, they will have the huge overall universe simulator that simulates economic points and militaries and stuff like that but there's like they said if with a million um potential actual people in the persistent universe there are going to be another nine million npcs and simulating all of those individually that is going to take a lot of horsepower so it might not well, be as intricate as i may have um described it in the past few minutes <laughs> to head into a technical ex aspect of it they might not need to calculate all of the time and only on on demand effectively true yeah i don't know how that will basically hide it yeah uh, with some sort of pretense for instance yeah this like just spawn this uh npc and give him some generic backstory why his boarding your ship to go from A to B without having to actually um, simulate his entire day up to that point yeah. where he decides yeah, yeah. to go there. Yeah. If they can do that in a believable way, I'm just fine with that because... Yeah, it's awesome. It will be awesome. Well, Chris Roberts did... I think it was Chris Roberts anyway, who said he wants you to not be able to tell whether or not you're dealing with a real player or an AI player true there'll but be he, he he did say with some caveats of course with some caveats that if it, if you meet a person that is really engrossed in role playing yeah then i suppose it will be very hard to tell the difference but just like in any mmo if you see a group of naked people dancing in a square you know they're people they're not npcs why do you know they're people though what happens if a group of people decide that they're nudists and want to go and dance in the street that's the level of detail we have to wait and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I suppose that's um, a good a point as any to end this episode of Fortnite in the Frontier. Yes. Dancing naked in the street. Dancing naked in the street. <laughs> <laughs> I have been Darianator and... Loose Unit here. Hello. And we will see you in, in the, the verse. verse.